criticised for racist Death rants continuously, and you spoke on, on their platform, a, a platform after which arrests were made. But the EDL became synonymous with right racism now, and Islamophobia. It will be okay. The English Defence League is here, and we are here for you! Hello everybody, I hope you're all well. So today's video is going to be a part two to my Rise of the Right series. If you guys haven't checked out the first part, I would really recommend checking that part out first before you watch this video because a lot of it's very interlinked. The only reason I've split this in half was so I didn't have a two hour long video. So in the last part, I discussed anti-immigration and fascism in British history, anti-immigration sentiment in modern politics and how this all relates to the Brexit referendum. Today's video is going to be all about the EDL, also known as the English Defence League and the rise of Islamophobia over here in the UK and how the EDL and Islamophobia has had a huge impact on working class politics. And like I said before, I really recommend checking out my first parts of this video because not only does anti-immigration sentiment have a huge impact on working class politics, but also neoliberalism and free market capitalism has had a huge impact on working class politics and has contributed to the rise of the EDL. And the reason that I'm making a whole separate video about the EDL, I find the EDL quite interesting if I'm going to be completely honest. They differ from a lot of other far right groups such as the National Front and the BNP because the EDL are not a political group. They actually have no political agenda whatsoever. Like I said, unlike the the BNP, the National Front, the British fascists, the EDL have absolutely no desire to enter mainstream politics and no desire to enter politics in general. A majority of their activism, I use that term extremely loosely by the way, is through street protests which often mirror football hooliganism. And I also read this book, The Rise of the Right by Simon Winlow, Steve Hall and James Treadwell to research for a majority of this video. This book does contain a lot of information. They also went out and did a lot of field research, spent a lot of time and interviewed EDL supporters and ex-EDL supporters. Just before I do get into this video, I just want to put a little disclaimer out there that I am not trying to justify nor defend the EDL or actions of EDL supporters. A majority of EDL supporters are white working class and far right politics has had a huge impact on working class politics. This isn't me trying to say that every working class person is right wing because I know that is not the case at all. But there is no denying that right wing politics has had a huge impact on the working class. I just want to add this really quickly because I didn't feel like I made it clear enough in the introduction. When it comes to EDL supporters, I am not trying to diminish their responsibility. They are completely responsible for being in the EDL and they should be held accountable for their Islamophobia, xenophobia and racism because frankly it is absolutely unacceptable and disgusting. But there are a lot of contributing factors as to why the EDL came about the way it did and how it came about the way it did and that's what I'm going to explain in this video. And you know all of this right-wing politics, right-wing tabloids alongside with political groups who are meant to be there for the working class essentially abandoning them has completely reshaped the working class political ground. As people who sit on the left wing of politics we need to have these discussions of why right wing hateful groups, dangerous groups such as the EDL gain so much popularity within the white working class. If we just ignore it it's only going to get worse. And although the EDL is a very extreme example of Islamophobia, Islamophobia has become so mainstream and normalised in this country. You could see it in the Leave campaign with the fact that apparently our neighbours are going to be Iran and Syria. You can see it in newspapers every single day, tabloids and also another thing, oh my gosh it's taken me ages to get into this video. This video may be lacking a little bit of structure because I really struggled to structure this. Everything was so like smushed in my brain and I'm not gonna lie I've been reading about fascism and right-wing groups for the last two months that I am just very exhausted and I tried to piece this script together as best as I could. So first thing to get started with is 
who slash what are the EDL? The EDL stands for the English Defence League. They are a far right Islamophobic group. They are not a political group. They are a social movement slash pressure group whose main forms of activism are either street protests or online activism and their current leader is Tim Ablett. Their core principles are being against Islam, against multiculturalism and their dissatisfaction with immigration policies in this country. The EDL believing that the UK's immigration policies are too soft and they want to defend the interests and rights of the native population and I already have a big qualm, a big flaw with this. What counts as the native population? A large and growing number of Britain's parents and grandparents were not born in this country. My grandma is German, my dad has dual citizenship with France, my dad's mum, so my nan immigrated here from Ireland. So in the eyes of the EDL, do I count as being the native population? because even though I was born here, three out of my four grandparents immigrated here. And if I'm gonna be completely honest, I think if an EDL member looked at me, someone who three out of their four grandparents were not born in this country and looked at someone else whose grandparents immigrated here during Windrush, they would see one of us as the native population and one of us as not, even though we are both in the same position. There seems to be two main reasons why they are angry about immigration. The first reason being is that EZR supporters believe that immigration is the cause for high unemployment in this country and economic depression decline, which we all know isn't true. All of us know that immigrants actually put more into this country than they take out. They believe that either immigrants are coming over here and stealing jobs from the native population or they are coming here and taking advantage of the council housing and benefit system. Again this is another example of the EDL's hypocrisy because if you come over here and get a job you are seen as stealing a job from the native population and if you come over here and you decide to go on benefits you are taking advantage of the benefit system. So either way you literally cannot win with EDL supporters. If you haven't watched my last video, the main reason for the steep decline in the working class over the last 40 to 50 years is because of the rise of deindustrialization globalization, neoliberalism, and free market capitalism. But mainstream news outlets, mainstream TV outlets, and even some academia do not talk about this because a majority of these television companies and these news outlets and these very high up big businesses benefit from the economic system which this country is under. And the other main reason why they're angry about immigration is because they believe immigration is diluting British culture and that Britain is no longer British. So no one is really telling anyone, let alone the working class, that the reason that their lives are declining so quickly and so steeply is because of neoliberalism. Of course people aren't going to want to tell the working class this because they would probably kick off and immigration is barely making any difference in their lives because economic immigrants often put more into this country than they actually take out. But all they see in these mainstream newspapers such as The Sun, The Daily Mail, The Daily Express is that immigrants, asylum seekers and Muslims are the reason why their lives are so bad and that ever since immigration and multiculturalism spiked in this country that their lives got worse. The EDL were founded in 2009 and they peaked in 2011 and have been on a pretty steep decline ever since then. Their leader was a very well-known person called Tommy Robinson. Robinson. He was the leader between, I believe, 2009 to 2013, whose real name is Stephen Yaxley Lennon, who, despite not being the leader of the EDL anymore, is still very vocal in right-wing politics, and in particular, he's still extremely Islamophobic. Very interesting fact about Tommy Robinson. You guys are probably going to want to know this. A few months back in the summer, he actually fled from the UK after someone, I believe, did an arson attack on his wife's home. So he, I believe that he actually fled to Spain because he feared for him and his family's safety. I know, can you believe it? The man who has been absolutely bashing refugees for years, may I add, has had to flee his home country because he fears for him and his family's safety. 
you actually cannot write it. You actually cannot write it. The main reason for the EDL's decline from 2011 was not only because Tommy Robinson quit as being the leader, but also a few supporters were convicted of plotting to bomb mosques around the country. But also there were links found between EDL supporters and far-right Norwegian terrorist Anders Behring Breivik. Despite Tommy Robinson for a few years being the appointed leader of the EDL, there is actually no official membership enrollment when you want to be an EDL supporter. You are not an EDL member, you are simply an EDL supporter. When it comes to the hierarchy of who sort of the biggest supporters are, I guess. The more you organise things, so the more you organise street protests, the more active you are in supporting the EDL, the more active you are online, the higher up you go. But again, there is literally no official hierarchy. A lot of EDL supporters don't even want there to be a leader and didn't like Tommy Robinson because they believed that the EDL having a leader was conforming to mainstream politics too much. Much. It was meant to be very anti-establishment and very anti-mainstream group. A lot of supporters even see the EDL conforming to mainstream politics and even possibly turning into a political party as selling out. Which is why a lot of EDL supporters don't like Tommy Robinson. They don't believe that there should be a leader. They believe that he's money hungry, that he's just doing it for cash, and that the EDL having a leader is not truly anti-establishment. And the EDL also differentiates from other far-right fascist groups is because they claim that they aren't racist, that they don't have anything against black people, and they speak in support of Jewish faith, and they criticise the Islamic faith because they believe they are doing it to defend women's rights and gay rights. I do not believe that this is true though, if I'm going to be honest with you. Of course we saw EDL supporters respond to the Black Lives Matter protests. They protested in an extremely aggressive way. Again, it reminded me a lot of football hooliganism. And you can see online a lot of EDL supporters overuse that 1000 genders joke, which is like so original and has never been used before and definitely does not get exhausting or tiring to read. But another interesting thing about the EDL is despite their supposed support for women's rights, for gay rights. They despise the left. They despise left-wing politics. They despise the left in general. They think that the left are obsessed with political correctness. They're all young, clueless vegans with short fringes and septum piercings. And a large reason for their hatred of left-wing people and left-wing politics is the only time they really come into contact with left-wing people is at their protests when people who are on the left are counter protesting against them. And of course, during these street protests, often it is very aggressive, tense and violent. So of course, they're not gonna have a positive experience with left-wing people. Not like left-wing people should be being positive towards them because they're having Islamophobic street protests, but that's probably why they are even more opposed to left-wing people. But I guess it's not that much of a surprise that the EZL don't like left-wing politics. It's because they are a right-wing group. But it does confuse me that the EDL supporters hate left-wing politics, hate Jeremy Corbyn, because they do realise that by voting against left-wing politics and being against left-wing left -wing politics, they are completely going against their class in Interests. Surprisingly enough though, according to the research done in the book of The Rise of the Right, hatred is not the dominant emotion found within the EDL and EDL supporters. The emotion displayed by a majority of supporters was inarticulate anger. So basically what that means is these EDL supporters were angry about something, but they couldn't put it into words what they were angry about. And some questions we need to answer is what are the EDL EDL angry about? Why are the EDL so angry? And how do EDL supporters justify and explain this? And how do they get so many of the white working class on board with them? It's very difficult to gauge how many supporters the EDL has, how many the supporters the EDL once had when it was in its peak. But one thing we do know about the EDL is that they have a very high turnover. People come and go very quickly. Now take this info with a pinch 
pinch of salt because I'm really not sure how accurate it is to be honest. It is believed that the EDL had around 35 to 45,000 active supporters in its peak in 2011 and the EDL Facebook group which has since been taken down peaked in 2015 with 180,000 members but like I said 180,000 members of an EDL Facebook group is not really representative of active supporters who are actually going out there posting things online going to pre street protests etc and when it came to supporters who were active in their street protests which is easily the most dedication that you can show to the EDL because going to an EDL protest is very risky which is the reason why numbers have declined so much since 2010-2011 if you're seen at an EDL protest past 2010 you could be arrested you could lose your job you know it's very very risky so a lot of people don't go anymore but when it came to people who partook in rallies and street protests it peaked in 2010 with around 2,000 people showing up to every protest and it declined to 800 to 1,000 people in 2011 and by 2012 their demonstrations only attracted around 300 to 700 people. Basically what I'm trying to say is how did the EDL justify their hateful Islamophobic rhetoric so well that they managed to garner 180,000 members on their Facebook group and 45,000 active supporters in their peak in 2011. With the exception of Jeremy Corbyn's Labour, love you Jazza, mainstream politics essentially abandoned the working class and mainstream politics did not engage with the working class of how and why their lives have changed so much. Cough, cough, neoliberalism. Because mainstream politics benefits so much from our economic system. And because of this abandonment, many working class people end up becoming extremely anti-establishment. According to EDL supporters, the true cause for their Islamophobia and intolerance is because they are trying to protect the interests of the white working class, the cultural and economic interests to be specific. They don't believe they're antagonizing, they rather believe that they are defending, but it does very much frustrate me because it's like, it's almost like they know that it's politicians fault and that mainstream politics has completely abandoned them, yet they're sort of going like this, going, hmm, Muslims. That's literally what they're doing and it's really, really frustrating. Oh, like deindustrialization. Like, yeah, no, they shut down all our factories and, and that's why our lives are declining so much and we can only get low paid service sector work because politicians, you know, particularly abandon the working class and no longer represent their interests. Hey, is that a Muslim? EDL supporters believe that economic immigrants and Muslims are harming the white working class by stealing their jobs, diluting their culture, and allegedly playing the system. And because of this, the white working class are not only economically declining, but they are also vilified, excluded, and silenced. The rise of neoliberalism is not the only reason why the EDL developed the way it did. If you watched my last video, then you know that racism and intolerance has always existed in this country regardless of neoliberalism and deindustrialization. So we can't pin it all on neoliberalism. You know, at the end of the day, there is no natural connection between working class life and right wing politics. But there is no denying that if everyone was provided with economic security, that racism would reduce significantly in this country. It wouldn't reduce completely, obviously, because as we can see, there's racism within all classes, there would probably be a pretty significant reduction of racism within working class areas. You know, in working class areas, it is very unfortunate that anti-immigration and anti-Islam sentiments are very common. And just because the number of EDL supporters has dwindled over the last decade, doesn't mean that the amount of racism nor intolerance in, these, in this country or these communities has dwindled. Racism and intolerance and anti-immigration and Islamophobia has just become more mainstreamed and more normalized and more accepted 
recommend checking out my last video because I talk more about it there. You know, a lot of people don't need to attend EDL protests anymore if they don't like refugees because they can just vote UKIP during the general election. And on top of this, there is a very negative stigma around the EDL now, thank God. The white working class are becoming more and more distant from left-wing politics, despite left-wing politics often being more suited to them and more likely to represent their class interests. The EDL was not and is not concerned with capitalism, neoliberalism or the free market. They have no desire to regulate it, manage it or change it to an economic system which would suit the interests of the working class. And I spoke about this in my last video but after the 2008 financial crash the Conservative Party were elected in 2010 and they basically had to sort of fix all this shit that had happened and their proposed method of fixing it was austerity, spending cuts which mostly affected the working class. But as I've said before, no one explained to the working class why their lives were declining so much. No one was explaining that it is free market capitalism and neoliberalism is the reason why their lives have gotten so bad. And all they are seeing in news outlets, in particular in right-wing tabloids, such as the Daily Mail, the Sun, the Daily Express, is about immigration, asylum seekers, and Muslims. Someone who has had quite a large influence over the white working class was actually Nigel Farage, who's the leader of the UKIP party. Not gonna talk about it too much in this video because I spoke about it in my last video, but a large amount of UKIP voters were white working class. Many EDL supporters actually live in Labour voting areas or they used to vote Labour themselves or they come from families who voted for Labour for decades. And EDL supporters who do live in industrial towns, often their families had links to trade unions. So it would be wrong to assume that EDL supporters were once working class Tories because that's very often not the case. And when it comes to the left and left wing politics, I am very keen to separate myself from, I believe they're called left-wing liberals. And it's basically people who focus very much on identity politics, problems like racism, sexism, homophobia, etc., which obviously is good. We definitely need to talk about those issues, but completely gloss over issues such as classism, neoliberalism, free market capitalism, which often go hand in hand with these problems which they're very passionate about. A very common example of a left-wing liberal is someone who loves a Obama. There is nothing wrong with celebrating the US having their first ever black president, but we definitely shouldn't be putting Obama on a pedestal being as he is literally a war criminal. Another thing which left-wing liberals do is they often say that Margaret Thatcher had girl power. Do you think Margaret Thatcher had girl power? Yes, of course. Do you think she effectively utilized girl power by funneling money to illegal paramilitary death squads in Northern Ireland? I don't know about that. Ignoring the complete irreversible damage that she did to this country, that she did to Ireland. Basically, what I'm trying to say is left-wing liberals don't address the root causes of the problems that they are so passionate about. They're very much the people who posted a black screen on Instagram, but they don't agree with defunding the police and redistributing that funding into impoverished communities to try and reduce crime. They are against racism, sexism, and homophobia, but they don't want to address some of the root causes to these problems, which is our economic system and poverty and classism. And often with liberals is that that rather than uplifting the working class and wanting to improve the conditions of the working class is they more believe in class fluidity. So they more believe in helping the working class move up from the working class to the middle class. They believe in social mobility, but they won't address what happens to the people that inevitably get left behind. And unfortunately, the liberal left get a lot more mainstream coverage than the left who believe in criticizing classism and also criticising the economic system which this country is under. So the working class can feel quite alienated from liberal left-wing people because often they're middle class as well. So they can feel quite alienated and they feel like their problems aren't being addressed when it comes to classism because left-wing liberals often don't talk about class. You know, and because they feel so alienated, they fail to see that a lot of left-wing people are actually on their side and want to address neoliberalism, free market capitalism and classism and economic injustice. And because the working class do feel so politically isolated, they will vote for 
anyone who they think represents their interests. One example of this is a lot of UKIP voters were white working class, when in reality Nigel Farage believes in upholding neoliberalism and free market capitalism and also believes in austerity and spending cuts. So voting for Nigel Farage was completely voting against their class interests. But because UKIP said that they would reduce immigration which would improve working class lives, the working class believed that they were voting in their interest when really they were doing the complete opposites. And as I've said before, the EDL is very anti-establishment, that a lot of EDL supporters actually don't vote at all. And they usually don't have any interests in local or broader politics. And when the EDL was founded in 2009 and began demonstrating and holding rallies and street protests, it obviously gained a lot of news outlet attention. And the more attention they got, the more people joined. The idea that Islam had supposedly diluted English culture seemed to resonate with quite a lot of people. You know, the idea that immigrants had either stolen their jobs or were taking advantage of a benefit system which didn't belong to them made sense to a lot of people and it made them feel like they could understand their frustration. When, like I've said a thousand times in this video, immigrants nor Muslims are not the reason that their life is bad. I may look a little bit different. I'm filming this on a different day. Sorry, camera died. You guys don't care. Let's get on with it anyway. EDL supporters genuinely believe that they are victims of anti-white racism and they believe that the country is selling out to the globalizing forces of radical Islam. You know remember it used to be Jewish people are trying to take over the world conspiracy theory which is still very popular now and now it's radical Islam is trying to take over the world. History often repeats itself. They believe that the cultural and religious differences between the native white population and the Muslim population are so different that they just cannot coexist with one another. They cannot live near one another because they think that it's just a disaster and that it makes their lives bad. They sort of make the connection that before there was high levels of Muslim immigration that their lives were fine, that their lives made sense, when in reality by the time that immigration was sort of increasing quite a lot in this country was also when deindustrialization was happening free market capitalism really sort of swooped in and so did globalization. So they're just making the wrong connection to the wrong thing. And if EDL supporters aren't in the street protesting, bear in mind these protests don't happen very often because they don't bring in large numbers since the EDL tanked. So if they aren't protesting, they will often be trying to broadcast their message via social media. Very often it's Twitter and Facebook. This has become a lot harder to do because of new hate speech rules and regulations thank god especially on facebook but you do see a lot of it on twitter because twitter's hate speech rules are very lax but EDL supporters do not trust mainstream media or at least they claim not to trust mainstream media they believe that mainstream media is run by wet liberal multiculturalists which I myself am quite surprised by because like I said in my last video our sort of mainstream newspapers in this country are very right wing especially the tabloids so the most popular newspapers in this country are the Daily Mail and the Sun and they are both two very right-wing newspapers. These right-wing tabloids literally created the anti-immigrant Islamophobic environment that we are living in in this country today, or at least they contributed very heavily to it. And bear in mind this anti-immigrant Islamophobic environment which now exists in this country, the EDL have benefited from this heavily. And the way the EDL convinced so many people that Muslims and Islam were the causes for their problems would they basically piece together small unconnected anecdotal evidence. One example is that they would use economic successes of Muslims or Muslim families in their local area, basically pointing and saying they're succeeding and we're not, that's not fair. They also use examples of benefit dependent Muslim households and they also use examples, a very common example that they use is Muslim men grooming underage vulnerable white girls. If you guys aren't from the UK and you 
you don't know, there were a number of paedophile rings exposed around 10 years ago, in particular in Rotherham and Rochdale. The perpetrators were British Pakistani men and the victims were very often white British girls who were very vulnerable. But also we need to remember that there were actually young Asian girls who were victims as well, but a lot less of them were likely to come forward because it could bring a possible family shame. So we actually are never gonna have any idea how many Asian girls were victims of these men. So the EZL and their supporters use these examples of British Pakistani men grooming underage girls and they use this as evidence for Islam being a toxic and dangerous religion. Already this can be debunked very quickly because there is no correlation between religion and paedophilia, ethnicity and paedophilia. When we discuss prevalent paedophiles such as Jimmy Savile for example who is a white Roman Catholic, his race never comes into conversation and neither does his religion. Or most notably when we discuss the crimes which occurred in the Roman Catholic Church which occurred for centuries due to systematic cover-ups within the church. When we discuss this no one ever questions Roman Catholicism itself as a religion. No one ever mentions ordinary Roman Catholics who had absolutely nothing to do with it. People just question the abuse of power and the corruption within the Roman Catholic Church. So why is it that all the systematic abuse which occurred in the Roman Catholic Church has absolutely no relation to Roman Catholicism or just normal Roman Catholics who had no involvement, but paedophile rings ran by British Pakistani men is somehow proof that Islam is immoral and has no place in the Western world. As I have said before, there is no correlation between ethnicity and religion and whether someone is a paedophile or not. And this argument of these paedophile rings is brought up very very often by EDL supporters as a way to justify their Islamophobia which I think in itself is very messed up. To exploit hundreds of young girls trauma just to justify your hatred. So what the EDL do is they use these small anecdotal pieces of evidence, all of these small disconnected truths that don't have any connection to each other whatsoever and they represent that as the entire truth, as an entire representative of what Muslims and Islam is, which is very far from the truth. They're just nitpicking tiny little bits of evidence which are completely disconnected from one another. Many EDL supporters believe that Muslims being dependent on welfare or just claiming benefits in general, you know, people can claim benefits and not be dependent on them, is a form of theft because those benefits belong to the native white population, which in of itself is extremely racist. Obviously everything that the EDL do is racist but saying that white Britons are allowed to claim benefits but Muslims aren't even though both probably pay their taxes. EDL supporters also cling on to the belief that Muslim neighbourhoods are invested into by the government more than white neighbourhoods are which there's absolutely no evidence to back this up nor suggest that it's true. And another thing that EDL supporters like to cling on to is that apparently Muslim businessmen and women don't pay their taxes which again there is absolutely no evidence evidence to suggest that this is true. There is no correlation between tax evasion and ethnicity and religion. Because a lot of mainstream newspapers, mostly centre to centre left newspapers, are extremely critical of the EDL, understandably, this just encourages the EDL to dig their heels in even more. And don't get me wrong, anger and frustration is a completely understandable response to the ongoing decline of the working class and working class conditions. But directing all of that frustration and anger at Islam and Muslims, you cannot rationally justify it. I'll probably repeat this a thousand times in this video. The increasing Muslim population in this country has made no contribution to problems faced by the white working class. The working class in general is made up of so many different ethnicities, races, religions, and everyone faces 
faces very similar problems to one another when it comes to classism. Every single race, religion and ethnicity has been victims to free market capitalism and neoliberalism. And I still do think that people underestimate how much deindustrialization really did negatively impact working class communities and how the switch from industrial work to low paid service sector work really affected working class people and their self perception. Industrial work often held a lot of positive symbolism. It was seen as quite patriotic. It was seen as contributing to the country's economy, keeping the country running, being the country's economic backbone. Industrial workers 40, 50 years ago would make a livable wage. Them and their families lived fairly satisfying lives in their working class communities. And there wasn't that much desire for social mobility to climb up the social ladder because, and I'm going to quote this directly from the book, the community life amongst working class neighbourhoods were a source of value for ordinary workers and their families. And it's odd because a lot of EDL supporters know that deindustrialization is the cause for unemployment and a lack of job prospects, but they are very reluctant to make this connection of deindustrialization and low paid service sector work to our le neoliberal economy, but they would rather squarely blame their problems on the large numbers of immigrants arriving in this country over the last 20 years. And funnily enough, as much as the EDL like to be anti-establishment and they hate the political establishment and they hate mainstream politics, they are playing straight into politicians' hands. They're doing exactly what they want them to do. Politicians and the establishment want people to not focus on our economic system. They don't want us to focus on neoliberalism. They are ignoring the fact that capitalism and neoliberalism are the causes for all of their problems. They're completely ignoring it and just blaming it on immigration. And that is what the political establishment want them to do. And speaking of mainstream politicians, funnily enough, in the book, The Rise of the Right, they did a lot of field research and they found that a majority of EDL supporters they spoke to, most of their hatred was not reserved for Muslims or immigrants, but it was actually reserved for mainstream politicians. They believe that politicians are mostly responsible for the downfall of the working class, but rather than being responsible because they've decided to play into a damaging economic system, they believe they're responsible because they've caused multiculturalism. So according to EDL supporters, their principal objects of hatred are mainstream politicians, and Muslims just happen to be people who they're competing for scarce resources with. Yet they seem to direct a majority of their hatred at the Muslim community. Many EDL supporters believe that politicians purposefully advance Muslim interests and in a way are collaborating with the enemy. Although they claim that their hatred for politicians is stronger than their hatred for Muslims, but they don't let their hatred for politicians stop themselves from being hateful and openly critical towards Muslims as well. They will still openly criticise them whilst claiming that they aren't racist. EDL supporters tend Tend not to see themselves as fascists. They see their actions as a last resort because they believe that British society and British culture has taken a very downward spiral and they refuse to stand around and let that happen. They believe that their online activism and their protests and street rallies are somehow helping. EDL supporters obviously fail to see any positives of multiculturalism. I'm just going to read a quote directly from the book. Multiculturalism is a positive cultural program which unfortunately must sit alongside a negative economic program. The growth of multiculturalism has neither prevented nor even slowed down the relentless widening and deepening of economic inequality. They think diversity has caused economic injustice when in reality it's free market capitalism and neoliberalism that has caused economic injustice. And there has actually been an increase in interest in cultural justice but there hasn't been that much of an increase in interest in economic justice. Now, at the moment, we are under the impression that the EDL is declining because of a reduction in people showing up to street rallies and protests, because obviously a majority of their groups have been shut down. Not that much is really going on with them. But you'd be surprised, a lot of people do secretly support from the sidelines. They're either thinking it, they either talk about it with their family, they either have anonymous accounts. So there really is no telling how much support the EDL truly has 
or had. And quite a few supporters do actually want the EZL to formalise themselves into a legitimate political party because the easiest way to support a group and a cause is to vote. It literally requires minimal time and minimal commitment. You can vote for whoever you want and you never have to tell anyone. So people who agree with the EDL sentiment but don't want people around them to know, they can just vote and then say that they voted Conservative or something same difference really. <laughs> and because a majority of EDL supporters hate lefties and reject any form of left-wing political ideology, they are completely cutting themselves off from a range of ideas and values which could intervene with our damaging economic system and improve their lives significantly. I spoke about UKIP in my last video so make sure you go and watch it if you want a full breakdown of UKIP but UKIP was originally a single issue party which just wanted the United Kingdom to leave the European Union and they started to gain a lot of popularity and the way they did that was they basically banked in on immigration fears and Islamophobia. They used a lot of anti-immigration sentiment and Islamophobia in their campaigning to leave the EU and instead of using any sort of economic benefits of leaving the EU, instead they just used, hey, if we leave the EU, no more immigrants. And UKIP really did differ from a majority of right-wing parties because they weren't scorned by the media at all. They were actually praised. They were called a breath of fresh air, saying it how it is, blah, 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 blah. The party and the party members themselves were racist, Islamophobic and xenophobic on multiple occasions and like I said before the party would often use Islamophobia and xenophobia in their campaigning which led to a hatred of Muslims and Islamophobia was no longer seen as radical anymore it was mainstreamed it was normalized so this sort of got me thinking is UKIP just an acceptable version of the EDL. I'm just throwing that out there. I'd love to see you guys discuss it in the comments. And back onto the conversation of the EDL and in particular street protests. If you guys sort of want an idea of what EDL street protests like, a lot of people who go to EDL street protests were very much involved in football hooliganism. So basically an EDL street protest is exactly like going to an away game. They start drinking early on, they do some narcotics, they have a laugh with the lads and then they go on their protest and because they're surrounded by the police and they see the police as their enemy it's like being surrounded by rival football team supporters but after a while the police really cracked down on these protests because they were so rowdy that people couldn't get as sort of pent up as they used to and less people started going because they found it less of a laugh and the caricature of Muslims that the EDL created is very similar to the caricature of a Jewish person that not Nazis created. They almost used the Muslim as a blank canvas to project every single negative thought they had about them on it. There was absolutely nothing positive about Muslims according to EDL supporters and if they did come across a Muslim that was friendly and open they would just see that as evidence of their conniving nature. Once again with EDL supporters you cannot win and it's so odd because EDL supporters really do see themselves as victims. They're convinced. They think that they're very hateful and antagonizing actions are a form of self-defense and EDL supporters only see Muslims as their religion they don't see them as anything more than that any other part of their identity is just not valid they are a Muslim and that is it and they don't apply that to any other religion they don't see Christians as just Christians they don't see Roman Catholics as just Roman Catholics and I'm sort of going to wrap this video up now but the downfall of the EDL the fact that the EDL has declined quite a lot over the last decade is not a win for the left unfortunately it is just the fact that islamophobia has become way more mainstream that people don't need to support extreme groups like the english defense league they can just go and vote ukip if they want to be islamophobes in quiet it's a shame that that is why the edl has had a downfall because islamophobia has become so mainstream it is the way that this country is but yeah no that's this video done i hope you guys did enjoy this i know it was a little bit of a heavy topic i would just like to let you guys know that i'm taking video requests at the moment so if you have any videos that you guys want me to see social commentary political commentary any of that just leave a comment i do read a majority of the comments and i will see you guys soon for another video bye